and I'm starving, so this is perfect. In 10, 9, 8. Hello YouTube and welcome back to Snatural Remedies. My name is Summer Martin and I am back again with another great video for you guys. Yeah, you see all this yumminess on the table? It's time for dinner. I'm gonna share my favorite three autoimmune dinner recipes with you guys and they are yum huh, huh, me. But before we get started, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and get into that comment section and let me know how you guys are doing with your dinner meals. I mean, you have to keep it healthy. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you can get these videos coming on down your timeline as they come out weekly. It's time to get into these recipes. This recipe that I'm gonna share with you guys are stuffed barbecue peppers. Yes, and they are delicioso. Another great recipe is my specialty curry chickpeas with jasmine rice and some fried plantains on the side. And last but not least, I have my vegan version of spaghetti, which is pretty much a marinara sauce filled with lovely, healthy vegetables. So yummy and so light and so tasty. So let's get started on cooking this dinner, you guys. I am starving. And if you haven't already, get dressed up with me. This is dinner time. Let's call it date night. So make it a special occasion and put on your best. Let's chop, let's cook, let's stir it all up. Now this recipe are my stuffed barbecue bell peppers. I love this recipe. It is so good, so healthy, and super light. So the ingredients that I'm gonna use for this recipe are obviously peppers, but we're gonna do a variety of peppers. I have a red bell pepper, I have an orange bell pepper, I have a green bell pepper, and a yellow bell pepper. You can obviously mix these up to your favorite flavor, but I like to use a variety of all of them. I'm also gonna stuff these peppers with some sauteed onions, some sauteed garlic, some sauteed kale, some cooked quinoa, and some Peruvian lentils. Now when I'm sauteing my veggies, I try not to saute them to the point to where they're just soft. You wanna kinda of cook them to a medium type of texture. You don't want your onions too soft, you don't want your kale too soft, because remember, we're gonna bake these babies inside these bell peppers in the oven. Just to toss it all together and make sure that the inside of these peppers stay nice and moist and flavorful, I'm gonna dip in some barbecue sauce and stir that all together. For this, I'm gonna keep my seasoning light. I'm just gonna use some salt and some pepper when I am sauteing my garlic, my onion, and my kale. So first, I'm gonna go on and use some grapeseed oil to do my sauteing. I'm gonna heat on medium and grab my grapeseed oil. I'm gonna chop up my onion really finely, chop up and mince my garlic really well, and then I'm also gonna pull the leaves off the stem of the kale. Taking it off the stem. Once you've pulled your leaf off of your kale, go in and chop it up finely. Now that my oil is nice and warm, nice and hot, I'm gonna throw my onions in there first and get those going. Once I put my onions in there, I'm gonna dash a little salt and dash a little pepper for those onions. Then I'm gonna throw my kale in. My kale's gonna go in second. Once the kale starts cooking down, I'm gonna throw in that garlic. I put my garlic in last. I'm gonna do the same thing. A little dash of salt, a little dash of pepper. And then let it all salt together together. Now that my vegetables are sauteed, I'm gonna get this quinoa going. So cooking quinoa is just like cooking rice. You know, your two to one ratio is gonna be exactly the same. But my trick to some good quinoa is go on and cook it in some vegetable broth. It's gonna give that extra special texture. So I'm just gonna do one cup of quinoa, which means I'm gonna use two cups of liquid. Today, I'm gonna use water, because no lie, all of my broths are frozen right now and I totally forgot to take it out. So once your water comes to a boil, you go on and put your quinoa in mix it together, pop the lid on that bad boy and put it on low and just let it cook. 
It's gonna cook for about 20 to 25 minutes until it gets nice and fluffy. And then you know it's done. I mean, again, pretty much like rice. Now, these lentils are my favorite. I get them at a really good grocery store. They're all organic, they're all natural, they're non-GMO. And I really like to use these because one, they're already cooked, so they're already ready-made. And that saves so much time. And the seasonings in these bad boys, oh, the Peruvian flavors are one of my favorites. So I love these. And normally for these peppers, a lot of people might use some ground chicken or some ground turkey. But for me, the lentils are gonna be the protein in these peppers. I just pretty much open this pouch up, pop them in a bowl, and let them sit to the side. Because once my quinoa is ready, now I'm going to toss all of this together. I'm gonna to throw in my sauteed vegetables, lightly toss that together. I'm gonna throw my quinoa in that bowl with those lentils and lightly stir that together. And last but not least, I'm going to throw in some barbecue sauce for the finale and mix that in really, really well. Once I have my mixture, I'm ready to stuff my peppers. Now that I've rinsed and washed my peppers really well, I'm just going to cut the lid off the top and set it to the side. And then I'm gonna pull the seed out of the center because you don't need that. Make sure all the seeds are out. And if there's any extra little, I guess, meat of the bell pepper in there, just leave it in there because that's good stuff. It's got good vitamin C in there and it's gonna blend really well with your mixture. Now it's time to stuff these bad boys. I take a tablespoon and I go in very carefully, one tablespoon at a time, because when you're stuffing the peppers, you wanna really get the base stuffed nicely. And take your spoon and just literally kind of press it down as you stuff, so that way the bell peppers are really, really full. Once you get to the top, you can just leave a little mound at the top. It's gonna bake really nicely. So now that these peppers are ready, I'm gonna bake this in a Pyrex pan, but I'm gonna line that pan with foil. Pop those peppers right on top of your foil. This is going to protect them just in case they get a little juicy in there. They won't stick to your pan. Make sure that they are close, close and personal, so that they can lean on each other for support. Careful not to crush your bell peppers, just leave a little bit at the top. So I'm gonna bake these for about 30 to 35 minutes on 425. I like to check them after about 20, 25 minutes. So you just wanna keep your eye on them to make sure that they don't overcook. Now, when these guys are done, I just take a small knife and I like to poke in the side. If the knife goes in nice and easy, then I know they're done. If it's kind of a struggle, then I'll let them cook for a little longer, maybe about 10 or 15 minutes longer. Now that these guys have cooked for a good 30, 35 minutes, I'm gonna take them out and let them cool. And that's the stuffed barbecue peppers. Super easy, super quick. I mean, this is a great one for dinner, especially if you're having a busy week and you're just tired and you just really want everyone to get their vegetables in, also get their protein in, and also get just some nice healthy food for dinner. All right, these stuffed barbecue peppers are done. The house smells amazing. You can smell all of the peppers cooking, the barbecue, the lentils, the garlic, the onions, delicious. They're filled with fiber. You get that plant-based protein in your lentils. These peppers will give you your vitamin A, your vitamin C, your folate, potassium, just super yummy. So I'm gonna taste one of these and just go right in. Mm-hmm. The flavors just keep exploding in your mouth with these peppers. You gotta give them a try. So delicious. Now this recipe is one of my favorites. Curry chickpeas with jasmine rice and some fried plantains on the side. 
This is so delicious and it just brings me back to Caribbean vibes. As you know, I love some Caribbean food, but I definitely also love to make it healthy. Now this recipe has a few very, very simple items. Obviously, we have some chickpeas. Get some good organic chickpeas. Some jasmine rice, which is also gluten-free. I'm gonna cook some bell pepper, onion, garlic, ginger, green chili pepper, hot habanero pepper, some scallion, thyme, and of course, cannot forget a tomato. For the seasonings on this, I'm going to use a very special curry seasoning. I've got to use the good old fashioned Gracie's Caribbean curry flavoring. I have to, it doesn't come out the same. But in addition to that, I also like to put in some cumin and some coriander. I think it really complements the curry really well. Also some salt, some pepper, some garlic powder, and some onion powder. And for a nice extra treat, I'm gonna boil some sweet potatoes on the side and I'm gonna also put those in the dish. So all of these come together with just some really great aromas, some really great flavors. I mean, mm, you think you are in Montico Bay, man. I'm telling you, delicious. First, I'm gonna boil these sweet potatoes. That way, while I'm cutting up all my vegetables, they can get going. And you do not want to overcook these sweet potatoes. You wanna make sure that they still have some firmness to them, otherwise they're just gonna fall apart in your dish. And we want them to stay kind of firm. I'm going to chop up my bell pepper. Yes, the whole bell pepper in about medium size. Chop up my onion in medium size as well. I'm only gonna use half of this onion though. Then I'm gonna open up this garlic and use about four to five cloves of this garlic, depending on how big they are. If they're really little, I'd use about six. I'm also gonna chop up this scotch bonnet pepper really finely. Chop up your scallion. I like to use about three or four inches of the green scallion and then also about two to three inches of the white part of the onion. Next, I'm gonna chop up this green chili pepper. And my tomato. I'm gonna wait to the very, very end to dice up my tomato because it's actually gonna go in the dish at the very end. Now that all my veggies are chopped up, I'm just going to sit them to the side. Go on and peel your plantains and slice those up. I like to slice mine up to the side, that way they have that nice little quarter look. And I just put them to the side because we're gonna boil those. Because we're gonna fry these later. How about that? Before we actually start frying and sauteing up all this yumminess for our curry chickpeas, Let's put the rice on. You want these rice to cook, so that way by the time your dish is ready, your rice is already ready. It's always a two to one ratio when you're cooking rice, super easy. I'm gonna put two cups of water on for one cup of rice. You wanna let that two cups of water come to a boil, dash a little bit of salt in there, put a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of uh, grapeseed oil in there and let it boil nicely. Once it's all boiled, then you put your one cup of rice in and then you stir that together. Let it boil for about one to two minutes. Let your rice start to turn over in that pot. Give it another stir, and then you're gonna turn that pot all the way on low, pop a lid on it, and that's it. Do not stir it again, do not touch it again, do not look at it again. The rice will cook all on its own, nice and neatly. Just let it be and give it about 20 minutes and I promise you, you will have the perfect rice. Now, to get ready for these chickpeas, if you're using the can, go and pop that sucker open, rinse off those chickpeas really well, and now we are ready to put together all this yumminess. I'm ready to get my frying pan out. I'm gonna go in and put some grapeseed oil in there because it's time to start sauteing. First, I'm gonna throw my onion in, then my chopped bell pepper, my minced scotch bonnet, my minced ginger, and my green chili pepper. Now I'm gonna throw in my garlic. Let that all mix in together. Now I'm gonna throw in my thyme, and I'm using real fresh thyme. 
So now that those are getting in nice and sauteed, I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper and let those get going. Once they start to get a little soft, now I'm going to throw in my curry seasoning. And the reason being is that I want that seasoning to open up first. So I'm gonna actually season it twice with curry, but I think it gets a really authentic flavor when you cook this seasoning and let the pores just really open up the flavor. Next, it's time to throw in my chickpeas. And I'm gonna throw my chickpeas in there and also put a little bit of water in the pan. I mean, maybe a third cup of water. I want a little bit of fluid in there so that way those seasonings and those vegetables can start to really stick and get nice and loose so that the chickpeas can get some of that flavor. So now that all of my veggies are in there, now it's time to really season this bad boy up. So I'm gonna throw in a little bit more curry. I go in there with some more salt, go in there with some pepper, my garlic powder, onion powder, just really start to season this bad boy up. The trick to the coriander is you just wanna use a dash. When I say a dash, I mean a dash. You just want a little ah in there, that's it. The same thing with the cumin, you just want a little, we're gonna do a two dash on the cumin, just ta ta. That's all you want, you only need a little bit. Don't go overboard or these won't taste like curry chickpeas anymore. Dash it in there, stir it up. Now cover this bad boy up and just let everything simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now that everything is simmering, I'm also gonna check out my sweet potatoes because those should be done by now. Now the sweet potatoes are done, I'm gonna go on and peel them and then just chop them up in pretty much small squares. Not too little, but not too big, like medium sized squares and set them to the side. It's been 15 minutes since these chickpeas have been simmering, so let's check on them. Everything should be nice and moist. The chickpeas are starting to cook down. All of the vegetables have cooked down. Now it's time for our final ingredients. Final ingredients that I'm gonna add are my scallion and my tomato. And I'm gonna mix those up really well and then cover the lid back on it again and let it simmer for like another 10 minutes. Since this dish has moved along, we are ready to add in the final ingredient, which is gonna be the sweet potatoes. And you wanna kindly fold those into your pan. Cover it up for about another five minutes so everything comes together, and voila, the dish is done. Now that my chickpeas are done, I'm gonna set that to the side just to let everything settle. And while it settles, I'm gonna go in and fry my plantain. Mmm, it's just going to get you some grapeseed oil or avocado oil, throw some in the pan, and put your heat on medium. Once your oil is hot, you can go in and throw those sliced plantains in. I like to let mine cook until I start to see the edges get a little brown, then I flip them over, let them get a little brown on the other side, and that is it. I pull them out, stick them on a paper towel so that the oil can drain off. If you like, you can sprinkle a little salt on those, or you can just leave them plain just as they are. Everything is done. It is time to plate this dinner. I like to lay my rice down first. Then take a nice couple heaping spoons of this chickpea mixture and put it right on top of your rice. Going to add a little bit of extra juice on there. So good. Then put your plantains on the side and psh, you are done. This is ready to eat. Welcome to Jamaica, come on. This is it, curry chickpeas with a side of plantain. So delicious. Mwah. So now it's time to taste this. I cannot wait to dig in. You guys know I'm hungry, right? All the time. Mm. <laughs> I'm just gonna be greedy as hell and just go with a mm and a mm. <laughs> you guys have to try this recipe. My favorite curry chickpea with jasmine rice and plantain. Enjoy. Mm, 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 mm. This recipe is my favorite veggie pasta with marinara sauce and all types of assortment of vegetables. It's pretty much my vegan version of spaghetti. I'm lying again. I've just been lying all day. Okay. <laughs> it is a pina pasta with marinara sauce and vegetables. For this recipe, I'm going to use a red bell pepper, an onion, eggplant, asparagus, some green cauliflower, yellow squash, and garlic. 
For the pasta, I'm going to use a lentil penne pasta. So delicious and gluten-free. For my marinara sauce, I'm using an organic tomato basil sauce already made. For the seasonings, I'm gonna use my traditional garlic powder, onion powder, all-purpose seasoning, and poultry seasoning. To put this recipe together, it is gonna be super simple. Now, we have some sauteing to do on the side, but while we do that, we can multitask. I'm gonna boil my pasta on the side, so that's already gonna be ready, and it only takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Then I'm also going to chop up this cauliflower and boil that on the side. I don't want it to be mushy, but I do want to cook it at least halfway through so it's already ready for the rest of the ingredients. While that's boiling, I'm going to dice up my onion, dice up my red pepper, my eggplant. I'm going to go on and cut up my asparagus as well as my yellow squash. And I'm going to dice up, finely mince up actually, this garlic. Now that all of my vegetables are chopped, I'm gonna go on and put them in a pan with some warmed up grapeseed oil. First, I'm gonna throw in the bell pepper and the red onion. Then I'm gonna throw in my eggplant and my asparagus and my yellow squash. At the end, I'm gonna throw in my garlic. So now I'm gonna season everything all together. I'm gonna throw in my garlic powder, throw in my onion powder. Now that all these vegetables are nice and cooked, I'm gonna drain this cauliflower and make sure I also add that to the frying pan with all these other vegetables. Then I'm gonna add in my sauce. my all-purpose seasoning as well as the poultry seasoning. I'm gonna let that simmer for maybe about 10 minutes and once it's simmered everything is nice and marinated and put together. I like to just throw my pasta in that frying pan and toss the pasta in there and voila the dish is done. Dinner is served. Oh my God, this veggie pasta is done. It is so good, it smells delicious. Now for those of you who made it to the end of this video and the last recipe, I have an extra special gift that I wanna put on top of this bad boy. This is my favorite smoked cheddar cheese. I love it, it is vegan, it is gluten-free, it is so good and so healthy. Look at how, look at how soft and creamy it is. I love it. And ready to dive in. Mm. Cut it out. Are you kidding me? This is filled with antioxidants. You're getting your protein from your lentil pasta. The eggplant is so delicious and so full of fiber. I'm gonna go in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Delicious. So that's my video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed these recipes. Please try these stuffed barbecue peppers. They are delicious. And you know you have to make that curry chickpea with the jasmine rice and the plantains. Ugh. And please get into this veggie pasta. It is bomb. All of these recipes are really great to keep you healthy and to keep your autoimmune conditions at bay. Please hit the like button. And if you really got into this, hit the subscribe button. I see you guys reaching out. Let me know you're trying this and trying that. Don't be afraid to subscribe. It'll come on down your timeline too if you hit the notification bell. If you made it to the end of this video, give me three cauliflower. That's like three cauliflower back to back to let me know you're on your veggie game. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Peace, peace, peace. Come and get it. Bang, 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 bang. I need a cowbell. Bang.